let's chat about assemblies. So on the screen is what we're going to get to if you follow my instructions. So we're going to use one of the parts you made last week, and we're going to take the same part, modify it, save it as a different part, and then make a brand new part. We're going to put them all in an assembly and make them function together. So follow close attention to get to the finish line. What I want for you to turn in is a screenshot that looks like this. So I'd like you to get it in your screen, hit F, Control Z to make it isometric, go to your SNP, which you should have in Windows and Mac. And if you're using Citrix, you'll definitely have it new. And I just want you to capture this. I want to see the part in the screen and I want to see your feature tree. What I'm looking for is that none of your parts are undefined. There'll be a little minus next to the part. And I want to see that all of your mates are there and that you've only used concentric and coincident for this assignment. So let's dive in to how to get from the part you have to the part on the screen. So the first thing I need you to do is open up the part from last week. It should have your name and the title. Mine is just named a part, assignment to part. What we're going to do is make a copy of this and make some changes to make a different part. So instead of starting from scratch, we're gonna use what we already have to save a little bit of time. The way I, I'm gonna go up to save, save as, I wanna save as a copy and open. So what that does, I'm gonna save this, call it assignment two, part two, and that file will open so that I can make changes. If I do save as a copy and continue, assignment two part will be open and I won't be editing the new part. So save as copy and continue. I want to call this assignment two part two. I already have one, so I'm going to overwrite it. You won't have. And we're good to go. So if you notice now, right here, I'm working with assignment two part two. So the changes we want to make, I want to make it thinner. So I'm going to go to the boss extrude one edit the feature and instead of being one inch thick i want to make it 0.25 inches thick i'll hit the green check and it makes it thinner the other thing i want to do is go to the cut extrude for the hole edit feature and make it a through all because we want this hole to be through the part no matter what so maybe we make another change we want it to go through Click OK. So we're all good there. I'm gonna save. Next, I wanna make a bolt that's gonna go through these parts. So to do that, I'm gonna go make a new part, go up to the sheet of paper, part, OK. So we're gonna use a new kind of feature to make this bolt. I'm gonna go to Features, Revolved Boss Base. So let me show you how it works. I click it select that front plane and i'm going to draw half of a bolt so i'm going to start here come around if you notice i'm lining up with that origin i'm going to go straight by it come up here and i'm not paying attention to the sizes because i'm going to add dimensions all i want to do is make sure that i've got my horizontal and my vertical relations in there now i'm going to add a center line from this point out here and make sure horizontal now it's kind of a quirk of the system this center line deal we want to apply a diameter to this bolt so for example if i just dimension here to here it's going to be the radius when we revolve it which we don't want so i'm going to get from here I'm gonna click the center line and I'm gonna pull the cursor down here. So now it's gonna dimension the diameter of this after revolve it. So I'm gonna enter 0.375 inches to match the holes we already have in the part. I'm gonna do the same thing right here for a socket head cap screw. 
the head is one and a half times the diameter. So let me show you a cool trick. Instead of having to break out the calculator, I'm going to type in 1.5. I'm going to hit the star and then 0.375. When I hit enter, SolidWorks and its infinite wisdom is going to figure this out for me. Enter. It happens to be 0.56, but another decimal place, it's a 0.63, so another decimal place should look more right. 0.5. 0.5. 5625. Okay, so about 5 eighths. Next, there's a little trick. If you notice, the cursor has the D in the center line next to the dimension. Wherever you click, it's going to try to add a dimension. So, for example, if I click here, it's going to try to add another uh, diameter or radius, which I don't want. So, I'm going to hit escape. And now I just want to dimension this line, the height of the head, I'm going to say 0.375, and I want to dimension the depth of the thread, let's say one inch, okay? Now we're still not fully defined, if you notice we got blue lines, so let's investigate. I'm going to grab this blue line, if you notice the whole sketch moves left to right, that means we need some relation that locks it in. How we're going to do that See this origin right here, I want to select the origin, control, select that line, and I'll do a coincident relation, okay? So that's all we need to get that sketch fully defined. If you notice, we got this blue dot. We'll just tuck that center line in here so our sketch is fully defined. Exit sketch, and now since we selected revolve before, it's gonna automatically revolve it for us. Since we have a center line, it's going to guess that axis of revolution. Say we didn't have that line, right? It could have more than one axis of revolution, depending on what line you select it to spin around. So in this case, we want this to make it a bolt. I'm going to click OK. We're all good on that part. I'll do save as, save it as bolt, and I'll save it as bolt too because I already have one. So we got three parts. Let's go ahead and assemble them. I'll go to new assembly, this middle one right here. Hit OK. It's going to have all the parts that I have open that I've been working on right here. If you don't have the part open, you could go to browse. So I'll have to go ahead and do that as well. Now I want to select the part. So assignment two part is where we'll start. This is the one we were working on last week. Open. Now, the first part doesn't matter where you place it. You can place it anywhere on the screen. It'll be stuck to your cursor. So just left click, drop it in there. If you notice, there's a little F next to the part. The feature tree in the assembly is just like in a model, except you got parts, and if you open it up, you can see all the features of the part in the assembly. So fixed means this can't move. If you try to move it, it'll tell you it cannot be moved. Great. So I want to add another part. I'll go to insert component. Let's go ahead and add that uh, assignment to part two, that thin part we just made. So I'm going to drop it. It's basically anywhere right now. And now I'll add in two of the bolts that we made. So bolt two, you're just gonna click. And now, if you need more than one of something, if I click bolt two right here, control C, and then click on the screen, control V, it'll drop another bolt. And you can drop as many in there as you need to. We're only gonna need two for right now. So let's have a material change so we can see what's going on with these parts. The way we do it, I'm going to select this first part. I'm going to open it up, scroll down here to material. I'm going to right click and I'm going to make this malleable cast iron. Left click, right, changes color. Now it's got material properties. So I'll minimize that, open the next part, go to material, right click, to make this one copper, right? So we can see that they're different parts. Now I can go to bolt, 
Now something interesting is going to happen when I change the material of one of these bolts. So right click, I'll do cast alloy steel. You notice they both change. The bolts are copies of each other. So if the, you change one, it will change the other. So if you have 50 bolts in an assembly and they're all the same, you can control them all at the same time, which is pretty neat. So next, let's start adding mates. Mates are like relations in a sketch. They control the geometry. What we're looking for in an assembly is to let the computer know where everything is supposed to be and how everything relates to each other. So in this exercise, we're going to use two kinds of mates, coincident and concentric. Let me show you how it works. Say at assembly, this top plane right here is going to contact this plane right here, right? So that part fits on top of that part. The way we tell the computer that is so, I'm going to click on this plane, scroll around my middle mouse wheel, then hit control, then click this surface. When I let off the control, We've got this dialogue here with our mates. Okay. So in this case, we want a coincident mate. We want those two planes to touch each other. So we're going to click it. The one part moves to the another one. It's kind of hard to tell, but those two planes will always be touching. Okay. So we've controlled a little bit of this part. Now <clears throat> to control the rest, to keep that top plate on that bottom plate, we're going to use one of these bolts. How we do that is with a concentric mate. So I select this portion of the bolt, hit control, hold it down, and select the inside surface of this. Now you don't want to select an edge, select that inside surface. The dialog pops up, I want to choose concentric. Now the bolt is going to snap into position. Next, I'll choose that same bolt, that same surface, hit control, select the inside of the other part, and I move the mouse too quickly. I lost the dialog box. No big deal. All you do is go up to mate, and you've got the same options right here. So it's going to guess that you want concentric. So since it's a bolt round, I want to go ahead and lock rotation as well. Select that dialog box and I'm going to click the green check. So this bolt is almost there. It can move in and out, but it's locking the piece in there like so. So the last thing we want to do for the bolt to get it fully defined and you're, when you're doing assemblies, you got to be able to hit that middle mouse wheel and pan around. I want to select the bottom of that head, pan around, hit control, hold it down, click. And I'm going to choose coincident. So that bolt slides right in there. If we come down here to bolt, you notice there's no minus. That means that bolt is fully defined. However, this copper plate is not. If you notice, it can still swing around. Now, we could fully define that plate by just selecting this surface, control this surface, make them coincident, right? That would solve the problem. But whenever you can, you want your assembly in SolidWorks to reflect real life. So when you're assembling this part, what keeps it together from moving are the bolts, not these two surfaces being coincident with each other. So that being said, I'm going to go back and delete that mate. The way I do it, down here, I'm going to open up the mates. They light up as you scroll through them. So that last mate I made, I'm going to select it, and we're going to press the delete key, answer the dialog, and now we're free to move again. Okay, so I'm going to select that second bolt and just do the exact same thing, but a little bit faster. Select that, control, select here. I'll do it one more time so I can get the dialog box. Concentric, bolt snaps into place. 
select this surface of the bolt, select this inside surface of that hole, concentric. And last but not least, I'll select the bottom surface of that bolt, top surface of this, coincident. So that's all we need. Oh, one more thing. That last coincident, I'll go back and edit the feature to lock the rotation right here. Okay. So now, if I go through, scroll through all of my parts, you can see they're all fully defined. I've got all my mates, coincident and concentric. This part is ready to go. So this is what I'd like to see refer back to the beginning of the video for your homework. Remember to take a screenshot. Remember to save your files with your name in them. I've got to start taking points off of your grade if your name is not in the file somewhere. If you're working on an assembly from more than one computer, remember you must have all the parts in the same folder as the assembly or at least let the assembly know where the parts are. You can't save an assembly file, move it to a different computer, and open the assembly because the parts are not there. The assembly is just the collection of parts. So good luck. Contact me if you need any help. We can arrange a Zoom meeting or I can just answer questions. Taking screenshots is a great way to show me what's going on. Uh, I'll see you next week via video.